gonna show you the complete workflow for how I made this energy drink advertisement, which you just saw. We're gonna model the fridge, we're gonna add some doors, we're gonna add some drinks, which we're also gonna make from scratch, by the way. Then we're gonna set up the lights, we're gonna set up the environment, we're gonna set up the camera and a little bit of animation as well. So you're gonna see everything. And if you wanna learn more about how to use Blender properly and how to become a professional 3D artist, that's exactly what I'm trying to teach you guys in my new Blender course and mentorship program. So if you wanna check that out, the link is below. Select the default cube and press X and click on delete. Then you're gonna press Shift A, Mesh, add a new cube into the scene. Press Tab to go to edit mode and select all the geometry on this cube with A. Then press G, Z, and 1 to lift it up by exactly one unit. You want this cube to sit on top of the floor, but you want the origin point to stay exactly in the middle. This is why we moved it in edit mode and not in object mode. If we move this in object mode, then the origin point is gonna move as well. Having the origin point on the floor is gonna make it easier to snap this shit around and place it somewhere else. Now you're gonna go back to edit mode and press Press 3 to go to face select mode, select the face at the top, and you can lift that up a little bit to make this a little bit higher. Something like this will do, but the proportions are up to you. Now in face select mode, we're going to use alt right click to select a face loop like this. Inset that with I. And once you do that, you're going to open up the inset faces menu down here where you're going to set the thickness to something like 0.14. It's very important that you remember this number because we're about to repeat the same thing. So while we're still in face select mode, you're going to use alt right click to select this face loop. Again, press I to inset. And down here, you're going to set the thickness to the exact same value so that's 0.14. That way you have some boundaries here which have exactly the same width. Now you can just select this face and extrude it inwards with E. That's going to create the cavity inside the fridge. Now let's quickly take care of the inside of this fridge. To do that, we're going to go to edit mode and select these three faces like this. You're going to press shift D to duplicate, right click to snap that shit back, P to separate this to new object by selection. Now tap for object mode, deselect everything and only select this object in the middle. And now in edit mode, you're going to scale this down on the Z axis a little bit. So you have a little bit of space at the top and the bottom. With control R, we're going to add two loop cuts like this. Then we're going to select everything with A, press alt E, extrude faces along normals and give it just a little bit of thickness like this. Down here, you're going to make sure to check even offset. And then with control R, we're going to add a loop cut here and another one over here. Make sure to select both of those edge loops and slide them forward to double G. Then we're going to select this surface on the inside like this and press alt S to shrink this inwards a little bit. Make sure to check even offset as well. Now go to edge select mode by clicking up here by pressing two and use alt right click to select these two edge loops. Press control B to bevel them. You just want to bevel them a little bit like this. This is going to be the gap where we're going to insert the grill, which is going to hold the drinks. Now we're going to add another loop cut here with control R. Click to create it, then right click to place it in the middle. Do the same thing on the other side. Now select them both and slide them inwards a little bit with double G like this. That's going to make this gap here a little bit more shallow. Now select all the faces on the inside of this little segment like this at the top and the bottom. Press X, delete faces. Select these four edges that I'm selecting right now. Press E to extrude, right click the snap back into place, and then G and Y to move this backwards along the Y axis. You want to push it up until around here somewhere so it's just a little bit further than the back of this fridge. Now you can select these two edges and fill them, then select these two and fill those, then just fill the gaps at the top and the bottom and you're going to be good to go. If you want to adjust the width of this gap, you can press 3 to enter face select mode and in wireframe you're going to use your box select tool with B to select this, then also select this down here, set the pivot point to individual origins. Now you can scale this on the Z axis to make it wider or narrower as you wish. I'm also going to select all the geometry from the front and move that backwards a little bit on the Y axis, just so I have a little bit of extra space at the front here. We're going to select Select all the geometry in here with A. Press Ctrl B to add a tiny bevel to every single edge here. In the bevel menu, set the segments value to 2 and the shape value to 1. Now the geometry on this object is such that when you add smooth shading, the smooth shading is contained within the bevels and that looks a lot better. At the bottom, we're going to take this face and duplicate it with Shift D, snap it back, press P to separate this by selection, then take this edge and slide it backwards a little bit, extrude this up a little bit with E, take this edge and slide it backwards even more, and now we're also going to bevel all these edges with Ctrl Control B. That way when we go object shade smooth, this is going to look a little bit smoother. Now before we move on to the details like the grills and the lamps on the inside and whatever else we got in there, we're first going to create a door so the fridge itself is completed and then we can start adding the details and all this other shit. To create the door, we're going to select the faces around this hole that we have in the front of the fridge. We're going to duplicate that with Shift D, right click to snap it back, P to separate that to new object. And now we're just going to extrude that outwards a little bit like this. And in object mode, we're also going to push it a little bit further out like this, just so there's a little gap between the door and the fridge. Now, I also want to make the frame of this door a little bit thicker than the fridge itself. So I'm going to select this geometry here in edit mode, press G, Z minus 0.05. That's going to lower this down by exactly 0.05. 
0.05 meters. Then I'm going to take this part at the bottom and lift it up by 0.05. This I'm going to move on the x axis by minus 0.05. And this is going to be 0.05 in the positive direction on the x axis. Now this frame is a little bit thicker, but you can adjust this whatever way you like. I'm also going to add a loop cut here with control R and then I'll bevel that with control B. Press Alt E, extrude faces along normals to push this inwards a little bit. That's going to make a little gap where we're going to be able to place the glass window. Now we're going to have to make the front of this door a little bit more round. The best way to do that is to select this edge and slide it all the way to the corner with double G like this. The same thing with this edge and all the other edges around the corners. Once you took care of all this, you're going to select everything with A. Press M to merge vertices by distance. Then with control R, you're going to add a loop cut here. Push that outwards a little bit on the Y axis and press control B to bevel it. Set the shape value to 0.5 and you're going to set the number of segments to something like three or four or whatever. As you can see, that makes a door look a lot better. Now you're going to use Alt right click to select this edge around the corner and also to select some edges on the inside here like this. Then press Shift G, select similar face angles and we got to deselect these inner edge loops because we don't want to have those selected. And once we have all the sharp edges selected, we're going to press Control B to bevel them. You want to make sure that you have two segments and a shape value of one again. That's going to allow you to go to Object, Shade Smooth and it's going to make this whole thing look pretty good. Once you've done that, you're going to select this face loop at the bottom of this gap here with Alt right click, then go Shift S cursor to select it. That's going to place your 3D cursor in the middle of the window here. So now in object mode, you're going to go Shift A, add a new cube. And then in edit mode, you're going to scale that cube down. Go to top view and make sure that the cube is small enough that it fits inside the gap like this. Then press SX to scale on the X axis so it's long enough. And then SZ to scale it up on the Z axis to adjust the height. Now this is going to be the glass window for the door. Select that window and shift select the frame. Press Control P, set parent to object keep transform. That way when you move the frame, it's also going to move the glass with it even though they're separate objects. So far we got the fridge, we got the door. Next, let's connect the door to the fridge with some hinges. And after that, we're going to be able to start adding some more details to the inside of this object. Now we need a hinge to connect the door to the fridge. Here's how we're going to do that. You're going to select the door and select this edge right here in edit mode. With Shift S, you're going to snap the cursor to select it. That way in object mode, you can press Shift A and add a new circle. Let's give that circle 16 vertices and scale it down in edit mode. And then with 7, we're going to go to top view. In object mode, we're going to push this inwards a little bit like this so that the origin point stays in the middle of the circle. Think about the origin point as the point around which this door is going to pivot. Now you're going to go up here to face, click on grid fill, adjust the offset down here in this menu to make sure that all the geometry is aligned with the world. Now press Shift D, right click and move this along the x-axis to around here somewhere. Place the 3D cursor on this vertex right here with Shift S. Set the pivot point to 3D cursor. Select this circle and scale it down a little bit like this. You can delete this entire half of the smaller circle and the far right side of this circle here. You're going to delete those vertices. Now you're going to place your cursor on this vertex right here and align this vertex with that one on the y-axis. Then select this edge loop and this one. Go to W, bridge edge loops, but make sure that you're in edge select mode when you do this. Otherwise, bridge edge loops is not going to be there. Now you might have to align this a little bit better. For example, we can move this vertex out a little bit more. Also this one down here. But now you're going to extrude this with E to give it a little bit of thickness. Then with Shift S, place the cursor on the origin point, which is still in the middle of the first circle. Select this object in object mode and duplicate it with Shift D. Right click to snap it back. And now in edit mode, you're going to scale this to minus one across the Y axis. Rotate it by minus 90 degrees around the Z axis. And you can scale this up a little bit if you want to and make sure to lift it up above the first part of the hinge. We're going to add another loop cut over here, select the surface at the bottom of this part and extrude that down so it connects with the body of the fridge. Now in this case we got some weird shading and we can fix that by correcting the normals. So go to edit mode and select all the geometry with A. Press Control N to recalculate the normals and now everything should be fine. You're going to select all the sharp edges on this object. Again you can select only a few of them and then go to Shift G, select similar face angles. You can also do the same on the other part of the hinge down here. And then with Control B you're going to bevel this just a little bit. Set the number of segments to 2 shape value to 1, miter outer to patch, and also uncheck loop slide because that's going to give the bevel a slightly better shape. Here's the difference between loop slide and no loop slide. Now you can go object, shade smooth, and the top part of the hinge is ready. Here's what's next. With shift S, we're going to snap the cursor to the middle of this hinge here, 
and with shift a we're going to add a cylinder we can leave that on 32 vertices scale it down with s and lower it down just a little bit so it's sticking out of the hinge like this now if you want to be extra you can connect some vertices like this with j across this circle and then extrude this up a little bit further and that's going to make it look like a screw or something but in our animation this is not really going to be visible anyway and now you have to go through the trouble of beveling this so control b to bevel this to make the shading a little bit better object shade smooth and now this is going to be the top part of this rod next we have to place that 3d cursor somewhere in the middle of the door and to do that we can select these faces right here on the side shift s cursor to select it then you're going to select this rod right here and in edit mode you're going to select this this is just the lower part of this little cylinder and while the 3d cursor is the pivot point you're going to scale this to zero on the z-axis that way the middle is aligned exactly with the center of the fridge now you can select everything with a shift g right click s to scale z to scale on the z-axis and minus one to invert this on the z-axis hit enter now press ctrl n to recalculate the normals select everything and press m merge by distance then select this loop over here shift s cursor to select it you might have some faces on the inside here so you can delete those with x faces now while your 3d cursor is here in object mode you're going to go to object set origin origin to 3d cursor you also have to place the origin of the door to the same location so while the 3d cursor is still on this rod you're going to go up here to object set origin origin to 3d cursor again so now if you use the medium point as the pivot point you can easily just rotate this door and it's going to open up as it should we're also going to have to duplicate this hinge and bring that to the bottom as well so place the 3d cursor on the door which is exactly in the middle of the fridge again select these two hinges set the pivot point to 3d cursor again shift the right click s z minus one and now we're going to make sure that these two hinges are parented to the body so select them to then select the fridge press ctrl p set parent to object keep transform now these are attached to the fridge but the rod and the other two parts of the hinge must be attached to the door so we're going to select that select the door ctrl p object keep transform and now when we select the door and open it the hinge is moving as it should now we also have to create some legs for this the legs are obviously going to have have to be lower than this part here because otherwise this is going to hit against the ground and you're not going to be able to open the fucking door so we're going to place the 3d cursor in the middle of this little vertex here with shift s then give me shift a add a new cylinder give me 16 vertices that's going to be good enough and scale this down let's look at this from side view so we can see the thickness a little bit better it doesn't have to go down this far so let's lift it up a little bit so it's just below this rod right here and maybe it would be a good idea to lift this up a little bit more extrude right click and scale it down a little bit then extrude it down one more time that way it's just going to look a little bit more detailed so it's going to look a little bit better when we place it everywhere else you can delete this face at the top then select these edges like this and bevel them with Control b that way we can go object shade smooth and the legs are going to look pretty good now select the fridge and place the 3d cursor exactly on this face in the middle here select the leg in edit mode you're going to select all its geometry shift the right click s x minus one then select everything with a again shift the right click s y minus one select all the geometry press Control n to correct the normal and now you got legs all around the fridge so you can select those legs select the fridge Control p parent object keep transform and now the legs are properly attached to the fridge let's just quickly do this as well before we move on we're going to make sure that this fridge has the same smooth edges as the door right here so select all the sharp edges on the outside of the fridge you don't have to worry about the inside because we're not going to see that anyway and once you got all these edges selected you're going to zoom in close to the door and it might even be easier to do this if you turn on wireframe now you can press Control b to bevel this and you're going to make this bevel the same width as the one that you have on your door again make sure you got two segments shape value one then just go up here to object shade smooth turn off the wireframe in the viewport overlays menu and now you got the same bevel on your fridge as you do on your door now i just realized that the inside is going to look horrible since we use smooth shading so we better bevel that shit as well i'm going to select all the edges on the inside Control b to bevel i'm going to set the miter outer shape to arc so now if you want to have clean topology you can just connect these two vertices with j but that's not really going to make any difference i'm just doing this because i know thomas colin is watching and thomas colin doesn't want to see no end goals we also got to parent the interior and the door to the outer side of the fridge so control p object keep transform now when we move the fridge everything is going to move along with it next let's move on to some of the interior details Now let's take care of the interior of this fridge. To do that, we're first gonna open up that fucking door and let's insert some grills into these gaps that we created right here earlier. We're gonna select this inner object and edit it in edit mode. And we're gonna take one edge from each side of this gap. Now press P to separate that by selection. This is going to automatically duplicate this and create a new object out of it. Now you can press F to fill these edges together. With Control R, you're gonna add a bunch of loop cuts here, which are gonna be the individual grills. And then you're gonna add a couple more perpendicular grills like this. 
this. Select all the perpendicular grills in edge select mode. Peter separate this by selection. Then go back to this large surface and select all of the perpendicular edge loops again. X, delete edges. And now you're left with just one dimensional lines here, which are perpendicular to each other. So now you're gonna select this main grill and go up here to object, convert to curve. And then over here in the curve properties, you're gonna be able to add some thickness to these lines. So open up the geometry menu and down here in the bevel section, you're gonna add a little bit of width. It's probably gonna be best if you add something like 0.06 or maybe even lower than that, perhaps 0.004 is gonna work better. But you can play around with this and figure out what works best for you. Now you're gonna do the same thing with these other grills here. So first go to object and convert this to a curve. Now you can change the curve properties and down here in the bevel section, you're gonna set the depth to 0.004. Make sure that the perpendicular grills are below the main grill. And now you can join these two into the same object by selecting them both in object mode and pressing Control J. Now go back to the object menu, convert back to a mesh, and you can now use Alt right click to select one of the ends in edge select mode. Then press Shift G, select similar amount of faces around an edge. This is gonna select all the ends. Now you can just press F to fill and Control B to add a little bevel here. Once you've done that, you can go to object, shade smooth, and then these are going to look pretty good. Make sure to push these grills out a little bit further so that they're on top of this perpendicular grill. And then also select all the main grills and make sure that they're sitting exactly on top of this perpendicular grill. You might also have to make the perpendicular grills a little bit longer and that way they're going to fit into this gap a little bit better so that they're holding everything in place. If you want to make the grills thicker, you can always select everything with A and then use Alt S to inflate everything a little bit. Make sure to check even offset in the shrink flatten menu down here. And now your grills are going to be a little bit thicker. Now you can duplicate this shit and place it on the next level. The next and final for now detail that we have to add to the interior of the fridge is going to be the lamp on the side right here. To do that, let's first select a piece of geometry here so we can focus on that with the full stop. Now we're going to place the 3D cursor somewhere on this corner with Shift S and with Shift A, we're going to add a cylinder that can keep 16 vertices. That's fine. We're going to scale that down a little bit and try to make this approximately as thick as you think a lamp here should be. It's going to be one of those lamps that they have on the ceiling in office buildings and if you hit somebody on the head with it, it just cracks and nothing happens. Maybe you get mercury poisoning or something. Who the fuck knows? Anyway, we're going to scale this thing up on the Z axis like this to make it nice and long. And it's got to be approximately this long. Make sure you leave some space at the top and the bottom. Once you've done that, you can also just delete the faces at the top and the bottom. Then come up here to the top and with shift S, place your cursor right there. And with shift A, you're going to add a new circle here, which is also going to have 16 vertices. Scale that down. You can extrude this part inwards, but then take this up and extrude it up. Go to face grid fill, adjust the offset so it's aligned with the rest of the fridge. And we're going to take these two edges and slide them inwards a little bit so they have a little curved shape. Select these four faces and extrude that up. We can also take these two edges and lower them down a little bit. This is just going to be a little space where we're going to put a screw right there. So we are going to use a subdivision surface modifier. Go to object shade smooth. We're going to bevel this edge down here. We can add a loop gut here, loop gut right here and here as well. That's as good as it needs to be. But if you want to select this surface and inset it to sharpen it as well, you can do that. Now we're going to select these two faces so we can place the cursor right there and in object mode with shift a we're going to add a plane which we're going to scale way down flip it sideways on the y-axis in this case this is going to be used to create a little plus shape on the top of the screw so it should probably be about this small you're going to select the edges at the top and the bottom extrude right click and scale this by a factor of three on the z-axis then take these two edges and extrude that and scale it by a factor of three on the y-axis now you got a plus shape you can press w to subdivide that select all the edges on the outside of this plus shape extrude right click scale this up w loop dual circle and now you can select this surface on the inside here and adjust the size if you want to or you can inset that with i maybe you want to select these vertices here to adjust them a little bit then extrude that inwards a little bit and scale it down towards the middle take the edge around the entire circle and extrude that back backwards a little bit like this. If you want to make this fully realistic, you can also extrude it inwards a little bit, bevel this edge up here. And now when you add a subdivision surface modifier, it's going to look pretty good. Now we got to correct the normals here and go to object shade smooth. Now we can just push this screw backwards a little bit more and leave it right there. We need to have the same shape down at the bottom. So let's place the 3D cursor in the middle of this cylinder here. Before we do this, let's make sure that this screw is in the same object as the lamp. So select the screw, select the lamp, press control J. Now in edit mode, you're going to hover your mouse over the cylinder and press L to select it. Then press Control I to invert the selection. So now we only have this part of the top selected. Make sure that the pivot point is set to 3D cursor. Then go Shift D, right click, scale this to minus one of the Z axis and correct the normals with Control N. Now you can just push this lamp back against the wall and that's going to be good to go. I don't think we're supposed to have a lamp on the other side. So we're just going to leave that there. And we're going to make this shit glow later on with some materials. Next, we're going to create some materials for this object.
To start adding some materials first, let's switch over to the shading workspace. And by default, the shading workspace looks like shit. So you're gonna right click on this edge right here, click on join areas and close that to the left. Move this down a little bit so we can see something. Open up the viewport shading menu and change the HDRI to something more reasonable like this. And also turn down the world opacity because I don't wanna have to look at this shit in the background, it's hurting my eyes. Now to make Eevee not look like a cheap video game, you're gonna go over here to render settings, check ambient occlusion, crank the distance up a little bit, close that and check screen space reflections, open that shit up, crank up edge fading, crank up thickness, crank up max roughness, and now you're gonna get a little bit of shading on your object, which is gonna become a lot more noticeable once you start adding materials. So to start off, let's just select the fridge and create a new material for that. We're gonna rename this material to fridge, set the base color to something dark gray. I think it's gonna look better if we make it metallic and reduce the roughness a little bit, but we're gonna add a texture to this later. You can apply the same material to the frame of the door, then select this surface on the inside and add a new material we're gonna name that chrome crank up metallic reduce the roughness and you can use the same material for the grills and it's probably gonna look pretty good now let's make some kind of a plastic material for these hinges so click on new right here name that plastic I just want to give this a dark gray color maybe reduce the roughness a little bit I don't want this to be metallic I'm gonna apply the same material to this item right here and the rod here can also have the chrome material do the same thing down here at the bottom by selecting these objects individually and applying the same material to them and we can also apply plastic to this lamp we have to select the screws and give them a different material. So in the material properties, add a new slot, load up the chrome and assign that to the screw. Then you're gonna select this cylinder for the lamp and add a new material to that. You can name that new material lamp, reduce the roughness to make it a little bit more shiny. And we're later gonna add some emission to this to make that shit glow. As for the glass, let's select that and add a new material here. We're gonna name that glass and we're gonna get back to making this a proper window with a glowing logo as well. But for now, just open up transmission, crank up the weight, lower the roughness to damn near zero. At least so it kind of looks like glass when you look at it from the side, even though it's not transparent yet. Don't worry about that yet. Now let's go make some custom textures for this fridge. Whenever you gotta make some kind of textures for product visualization purposes, you can get away most of the time just using Canva. Google Canva, open up the first link. You probably gotta sign up, but it takes you seven seconds and it's completely for free. You go to create a design, custom size. Let's do 2048 by 2048. And now you can make almost anything just using a few simple features on the left side here. For example, you can click on the background, change the background color to whatever you want. Then you can go to your elements. You can add any type of shape you want. For example, squares or lines or leaves or whatever the fuck. You can go to the text menu and add a text box. You can write whatever you want and you can select the text and change the font right here. Change the text color. You can add effects to your text if you want to. Change the color of any shape to whatever you want. It ain't rocket science. You can figure this shit out. So here's just a quick speed run of how I created this simple texture that I want to put on the side of the fridge. We're going to do the same shit later with the energy drink. Once you came up with a little design, by the way, I'm gonna use this only as a roughness map. We're gonna go up here to file, download. That's gonna open up this menu where you can click on download again. And before you know it, this shit is gonna be downloaded to your computer. So now you can go back to Blender and start using this as a texture. So to use this as a texture, we're gonna select the fridge and open up the fridge material. And in the fridge material, we're gonna search for and add an image texture node. But we're just gonna click on open right here. And we're gonna find the image which we just downloaded. Once you found that, you can plug that into roughness. And we're gonna select this surface on the side of the fridge press u unwrap then over here in the uv editor we're going to take a look at what this uv map looks like as you can see it's not too visible right now but we are going to add a brightness contrast node between the image texture node and the principal node that way we can adjust the properties of this image and we can make it a lot more clear what this is supposed to be so the difference between the reflective parts and the non-reflective parts is going to be greater now we're going to do the same thing back here on the other side and also unwrap this surface with u and unwrap place that so the company logo is exactly in the middle of the fridge. Then select only the two surfaces on the side. Press Ctrl I to invert the selection. Select the entire UV map for what you have selected right now and just throw it into some light corner of this map where we don't have anything visible on the surface. So right now these patterns are only visible on the side of the fridge. We're gonna have to do the same thing for the window frame. So select all that geometry, scale it down in the UV map and place it over some empty area. That way we don't gotta worry about having any weird patterns on that. And since this is a roughness map, the lighter areas have higher roughness and the darker areas have lower roughness. We might even be able to take this a step further and add a a bump node here then plug the color into height 
and the height into normal. And right now it's a little bit too intense, but if we reduce the strength, this might give us a pretty cool effect. And it's gonna start to look like something has been carved out of the side of this fridge. But now we're gonna go back to Canva and make a new design. I want the same dimensions once again, and we're gonna make the background black. That's because we're gonna use this as a transparency map and an emission map simultaneously. So the black surface is gonna have zero alpha, which means full transparency. And it's also gonna have black emission color, which means it's not gonna glow. On top of that, we're gonna add a text box right here type in ball i'm going to change the font size to this hk modular shit make that a little bit larger like this and then i'm going to duplicate it and type in energy make that a little bit smaller like this and we're also going to add our leaves right here we're going to place those leaves somewhere around here and now we have to make sure that all of this is the same color so we're going to select the leaves let's say we want to make this light blue then we're going to select all the text in the text box and give it the same blue color do the same shit for the next text box now you can select the two text boxes and go to effects go to neon that's going to make this look like it's glowing and you can change the intensity here if you want to you can also select these leaves and duplicate them up here then go to edit image in the effect section you're gonna find blur crank up the intensity and that's also gonna make it look like it's glowing now go to file download download again and here's how you can apply this in blender to make this window transparent and to place a logo there which is gonna glow you're gonna select this window right here and with shift a add an image texture node there open up the image which you just downloaded and you're gonna plug that first into alpha once you plug that into alpha you're gonna go to edit mode and select the face at the front press you and click on unwrap now place this so that the logo is exactly in the middle you can't really see nothing right now but you're gonna be able to see this in a second then go over here on the right side to the material properties and scroll down to settings you're gonna change blend mode to alpha blend and as you can see that gets you a little bit closer to where you want to be now in this case we've got to rotate the UV map by 180 degrees to flip this and as you can see since the background is black that means value zero that means alpha zero and since this is lighter color that means it has a higher value which means a little bit less transparency or a little bit more alpha now it's still not very bright that's why this is still a little bit transparent and if you want to make this brighter you can just go ahead and add a brightness contrast node and if you increase the contrast and the brightness you're gonna see that the logo gets less transparent just make sure that you don't make the glass any less transparent as well now you're gonna go over here and open up emission in the principal node and you're gonna plug the color from the same image texture node into color here and once you crank up emission you're gonna see that this is gonna start to glow and of course if you want to you can add a hue saturation node here and now you can change the color by just adjusting the hue to whatever you want let's also select this lamp on the inside and we're going to go to the material properties for that scroll down to emission and just crank that shit up this is going to make a lot more sense if in the render properties you activate bloom but you're going to have to reduce the radius in that same menu and you can also change the bloom color if you want to but you're probably better off just adjusting the emission color for this lamp and now you can set the same color to the side lamp and to the logo and believe me this is going to look pretty damn good once we create a proper environment for this next we're gonna need some cans Making a can in Blender can't get any easier than it already is. So with Shift A, you're gonna add a circle. Let's do 64 vertices and bring that shit to the side here. Fill that and extrude it out. Give me a loop cut here. Click and right click. Control B to bevel this. You're gonna select the faces at the top and the bottom and use individual origins to scale them down a little bit. Then you can extrude this out just a little bit more if you want to. Now select the edge at the bottom and just bevel that. Then select these two edge loops and bevel that as well. Now we're gonna come up here to the top where you're gonna extrude this a little bit further. Bevel these two edges only and you probably want to select this edge loop and go to alt e extrude faces along normals you don't have to worry about the top since you're not going to be able to see that anyway but you are going to have to bevel these two edge loops here with control b set the shape value to one just to contain the shading and you can add another loop cut down here and extrude this upwards a little bit more if you want to and just for good close-up shots i would recommend that you also bevel these edge loops a little bit like this and that you set the shape value here to 0.5 and also increase the number of segments to something reasonable and now you can just go to object shade smooth and you got a pretty decent can shape if you don't like this can shape then just change the proportions a little bit it ain't rocket science this shit can't be any easier now let's design a very simple label for this can so of course we're gonna go back to canva go to file new design custom size and let's set the background color to some type of dark blue or something like that we're gonna add a text box here which is gonna say ball select the text and change the font to hk modular which is what we used before rotate this by 90 degrees you can see a little number on the side right there scale that shit up then you're gonna duplicate this and push it to the side here scale it down and here you're going to type in energy you might have to expand this box a little bit by holding down alt and pulling it to so both sides stay even and now scale this down and place 
it down here somewhere, then duplicate this and rotate it back to zero degrees. Now you're going to bring that down to the bottom and scale it down a little bit. Now you just have another reminder telling the drinker that this is an energy drink and not booze. You're going to select all these text boxes and group them together. And then from the elements box, you're going to add some shapes, like maybe a couple of these circles. You're going to give that circle a color, which is kind of similar to the background, but maybe a little bit lighter. Place that here, right click to duplicate it and place it somewhere over here. Just make sure to right click and use the layer menu to push it into the background and just play around with this shit a little bit. Figure out a design of your own. It ain't rocket science either. After that, let's go ahead and add some more leaves here. Right click layer and send backwards. We're going to place this somewhere at the bottom of the can like this. And just for the hell of it, let's also add a little cube here, which we're going to make very thin. We're also going to make it very long and change the color to white. We're going to place that around here. So just so it's at the top of the can. And if you want, you can also duplicate this line and take it down to the bottom of the can as well. You can add whatever else you want to this can. It doesn't matter. It's completely up to you. Now we're going to go to file, download, download again. And then we're going to head back to Blender and switch to the shading workspace. Add a new material to the can, which we're going to name can one in here. We're going to add an image texture node, in which we're going to load that last image, which we just downloaded, plug that shit in the base color. And you're going to select an edge loop at the top and the bottom of the can like this. Control E to mark seam. And at the back of the can, you're going to select another edge connecting these two seams. Control E mark seam. That's going to allow you to select this and press U to unwrap it. Now, if you go to shading view, now you can just rotate the UV map sideways like this and scale it up a little bit. Change the positioning so you can see the texture on the can. Then we're also going to make this metallic and reduce the roughness a little bit. Take this surface at the bottom and press Control plus to add more to the selection. We're trying to select this entire ring around the top. And after we select this entire ring, we're going to go over here and add a new material slot load up the chrome material and assign it right there. If you want to, you can also do this at the bottom, but that's probably not going to be very visible anyway. Just select the geometry where you want to have the same material and assign the chrome. And now you got a pretty beautiful looking can. Now we're going to need a couple of variations of this can. So we're going to duplicate this and place it to the side. On the second can, we're going to go to the can one material and duplicate that using this button right here. Rename that to can two. And here between the image texture node and the principled node, you're going to use shift A to add a hue saturation value node and place that right there. Change the hue to whatever you want. For example, you can make this red. You can change the saturation. You can change the brightness of this whole thing. Then you can duplicate it again and duplicate the material one more time and rename that to can three. Now on the third one, you can change the color to green or to something like this, whatever you want. Play around with this a little bit. And after you got a couple of designs for your cans here, which you created in Blender, we're going to start loading this into the fridge. So to do that, we first got to scale these all the way down so they fit into the fridge. We're going to place them in the front right here and let's decide how we're going to place these in there. Let's open up the fridge door and let's place the first can here on the first grill at the top. So we're going to select a piece of geometry on this grill and we're going to snap this can there with shift S selection the cursor. Now we're going to scale that down a little bit further like this. Let's push it out to the side and make sure that it doesn't clip through the grills. Now we're going to duplicate this can once with shift D. So we have two rows of the blue can first. Then we're going to snap the red can there as well. We can also have two rows of red can or even three rows of red can, but it looks like we don't have enough space for five cans. So we better just make all this a tiny bit smaller still. Now we're going to snap the other cans in there as well and make sure they're standing on the next shelf. Let's say that down here we want to have three rows of the green or whatever color this is. After that, we're going to have a couple of these browns here and I want the bottom shelf to be filled with the white can. So let's place that down at the bottom. We're going to duplicate this five times in total and we're going to fill up the lower shelf with these. Now we got a full fridge, but if you want to make this a little bit more realistic, you're going to have to select all the cans like this, duplicate them with shifty and also add an extra layer in the back background so it looks more full and you can't see through anything. You don't have to fill it up all the way, but you're definitely going to need at least two rows, maybe even three. This is what your fridge looks like so far. Now let's take care of the lighting and let's take care of the animation and all that other shit. Now, before we create an environment, let's make the inside of this fridge a little bit brighter. We're going to place a 3D cursor on the edge at the bottom of the fridge like this. And with shift A, we're going to add an area light. Flip that around by 180 degrees and go to render view so you can see this a little bit better. You're going to scale this down a little bit and make sure that it's on this surface on the inside like this. Scale it up on the x-axis to make it longer. And you might want to rotate it a little bit to change the direction of the light. You can also adjust the power for this lamp in the settings here on the right side. Then duplicate this, rotate it by 180 
180 degrees around the y-axis and bring it up here to the top of the fridge where it's going to cast some light onto the cans at the top. At this point, I'm sick of this red light on these lights, so I'm going to turn that into something more purple. And even though it doesn't make too much sense to have another light here in the middle, it looks a whole lot better when we add one here. Now we're going to need some environmental lighting. And to get that, we're going to go to Google, type in HDRI and go to Polyhaven HDRIs. You're going to find a whole big ass library of environmental textures. And in the search box, you're going to type in Royal. That's going to give you this thing right here called Royal Esplanade. We're going to click on that, download right here. And in the shader editor and blender, we're going to switch from object to world. Make sure that you have your node wrangler enabled before you do this. And to do that, go up here to edit preferences add-ons type in a node check this box right here called node wrangler now when you select the background node here you can press ctrl t this is going to allow you to load in a texture for the environment using the open button right here you're going to find this royal esplanade thing in your downloads folder so open that shit up now you got an environment and you can change the position of this environment using the rotation slider right here i want this big corridor to be placed behind the fridge when i look at it from this angle so that's going to look something like this and now we're also going to snap the 3d cursor to the bottom of the fridge where we're going to add a plane scale that plane up to as big as you can make it and make sure that the feet of the fridge are not clipping through so you might have to lower this down a little bit now add a new material to this plane and make that dark gray reduce the roughness a little bit but we're gonna adjust this later once we got this going well for us we're gonna set up the camera really quickly you're gonna place your view somewhere around this angle that you're looking at right now select the camera and go to view align view in the align view menu you're gonna find where it says align active camera to view that's gonna instantly snap the camera to your view now you can place the 3d cursor onto the refrigerator and use the 3d cursor as a pivot point now you can rotate the camera around the local x-axis lower it down or around the z-axis where it's gonna pick it exactly around the fridge but i recommend you keep this angle here now i'm gonna press g and double z to move this along this local z axis to move it a little bit closer to the fridge i want the animation to start around here somewhere but before we animate the camera let's set up the environment a little bit better in the camera settings here you're gonna check depth of field open up that menu and in the aperture section you're gonna reduce the f-stop to something very low which is gonna make the background blurry and you might have to adjust the focus distance so you're focusing on the refrigerator i'm also gonna make the floor a little bit darker like this and then with shift a we're going to add an area light somewhere into our scene we're going to place that next to the fridge like this and rotate it a little bit we're going to push it back with g and double z and then we're going to increase the power here that's going to create a reflection on the side of the screen so if we move this up or down that reflection is going to change and i'm also going to give this light a light blue color like this so it looks a little bit more realistic given the environment we're also going to add another area light somewhere like this we're going to move that backwards to the left side and crank up the power I just want this to give me a little bit of reflection on the frame of the window as you can see right here I'm gonna make this light purple so it kind of matches this lamp right here But I still might change the color of this lamp and the screen So if I do that, I'm also going to change the color of this lamp accordingly Now we got some basic light set up and here's what we're gonna do next in the animation workspace We're gonna select the camera and press zero to enter camera view I'm gonna move my marker to the first frame and here I want the camera to be in this position So with the camera selected, I'll press I keyframe location rotation and then i'm gonna move some 250 frames down the line or maybe even 300 frames down the line i'll place my marker on the last frame and here i'll move the camera backwards a little bit with g and double z that way as the animation progresses the camera is slowly going to be moving away from the fridge now in the last frame i'll press i keyframe location rotation now we're going to select these two keyframes with a and press t change the interpolation to linear and now when we play this animation the camera is slowly going to move backwards but i want this to be a little bit faster and smoother so in the output properties i'm going to change the frame rate to 30 fps that way the animation is going to be moving a little bit faster but it's still hardly visible at all so i'm going to go back to the last frame select the camera again and push it backwards a little bit further still and now keyframe location rotation and after playing around with this a little bit more now the camera movement looks a lot smoother next we're going to take some cans and place them here in the foreground so so I want the red can. I'm going to duplicate that and place it to the side. Then I'm going to select the blue can and duplicate that as well. Let's make a loop cut on this plane that we have right here so we can tell Blender where to snap these cans. With Shift S, we're going to snap cursor to selected. Then snap the cans to that same position with Shift S selection to cursor. Put them side by side and place them somewhere around here so that when we enter camera view, they're going to be right here on the side. Now, before I start messing around with the focus of the camera, I want to make the camera kind of slow down and stop towards the end. So somewhere 
near the end, let's say about 50 frames before the animation ends, I'm going to select the camera and press I to add another keyframe in this exact position at this particular time. I'm going to pull that backwards a little bit so this last part is a little bit slower. And then I'm going to select the last keyframe and press Shift D to duplicate that. So at this last part right here, the camera is not moving at all. Now I got to select these two and set the interpolation to Bezier with T. And now you're going to see that as we get towards the end of the animation, it slows down and after a while it stops completely. Now we just have to keyframe the camera blur before we start concentrating on these cans in the front here a little bit more. So in the beginning, I want my camera to focus on the refrigerator. So I'll select the camera in the data properties for the camera and in the depth of field section, I'm gonna set the focus distance to whatever is required so that the cans are in focus inside the refrigerator. I'm also using an f-stop value of about 0.3 or 0.4. That seems to work the best in this situation. Now you can probably adjust that to whatever works best for you. So at frame one, this is going to be the focus distance and we're going to keyframe that by clicking on this button right here. But we're going to have to change that as the animation progresses because I'm going to want the focus to shift from the fridge onto the cans. So around this frame, I still want the focus to be on the fridge, which means we have to slightly increase the focus distance since the camera moved away a little bit. So we're going to adjust the focus distance and keyframe it one more time. And then all of a sudden, we're going to move to frame 223, let's say, and reduce the focus distance all the way down so that we're focusing on these cans right here. Now we better make these cans here a little bit bigger because right now they look a little bit silly. But in this case, if we set the focus distance to something like 5.5, we can keyframe that now because now the cans are in focus. So you're going to see now that for the first part of the animation, the fridge is in focus. And then all of a sudden the focus shifts from the fridge onto the cans. It also looks like we're gonna have to take this fridge and push it to the side a little because otherwise we can't see this surface here. And once we got this camera animation figured out more or less, as you can see right now, the focus switches from the fridge onto the cans. Now we gotta set up some lighting for the cans and maybe some droplets and all this other shit. Now we're gonna need some droplets and we're gonna make the fucking droplets with some geometry nodes. You're gonna select this blue can right here and you're gonna press Shift D to duplicate, right click to snap it back into place. Then with Control R, you're gonna add a bunch of loop cuts like this so that your geometry is evenly concentrated across the entire mesh. Then you're gonna switch over to geometry nodes, focus on this can back here, click on new right here and you can name this drops. Before I tell you what to do next, I learned this technique from a guy called Poly Playground on YouTube. He's got a great tutorial for this shit. Go check him out so I don't look like a scumbag. Now press Shift A and search for and add a node called Object Info. Place that right here. Change this to Relative and you're gonna use this eyedropper to target the can here. You're gonna click and drag Geometry and release it here. Then search for something called Distribute Points on Faces mesh click and add that right here you're gonna change this from random to poison disk click and drag this point shit and when you release it you're gonna type in instance on points points add that right there then click and drag and release this instance shit right here search for an add uv sphere mesh and place that right there now you have to plug this instances thing into the group output geometry input and for some reason for me this object info node doesn't do anything i just realized this instead i gotta plug this geometry input geometry into mesh here on the distribute points on faces node. This makes the sphere visible on my mesh. So now you can reduce the radius here. I figured something like 0.01 might work pretty well, but you can change that, increase the size a little bit according to whatever looks best for you. Now you can increase the density maximum in this distribute points on faces node to add more droplets. And then finally, between the instance on points and the group output node, we have to add a realize instances node. We also have to search for and add a set shade smooth node. That's gonna give us smooth shading because you can't just go up here to object shade smooth Don't ask me why and we're also going to have to search for and add a set material node Place that between the last two nodes that you got right now That's gonna allow you to apply a material to these drops So in the material properties, you're gonna add a new material called drop to make it look more like water Reduce the roughness open up the transmission menu and crank that all the way up Now you can load this material into the set material node and it's gonna be a good idea to give this a darker color because otherwise These are gonna be way to reflective and maybe also give this a little bit of transparency by reducing alpha and setting blend mode to alpha blend now you can duplicate this droplet object and snap it onto the next can now you got droplets in your can now that looks pretty damn fresh 
And now we have to add some lights around these cans. So with Shift A, we're going to add an area light, lift it up a little bit and set the pivot point to 3D cursor so you can rotate it to here. That way you can easily pull this away by just moving it along the local Z axis. And if you crank up the power, you're gonna see some nice reflections on the side of the can. I'm gonna place the first lamp over here so the reflection is right over the energy text. I'll give that light a light blue color and then we're gonna duplicate it with Shift D and place the other one somewhere over here on the left side. This one has to have a warm color Color, so we're gonna make that light orange or light red or something similar and finally we're gonna make it so that these lights are rotating around the cans to do that with shift a you're going to add an empty plane axis and place that right on top of the can here now parent this light to that empty with control P object keep transform and we're also going to add another empty to which we're going to parent the next light right here now this empty controls the left light this one controls the right light now let's go back to the animation workspace and animate this I want these lights to come into place as the camera starts to focus on the cans in the foreground. So at around here somewhere when the camera focuses on the cans, I'm going to press I, keyframe location rotation on this first empty, and then I'm going to move it backwards and at the beginning of the animation, I'm going to rotate this so that this light is somewhere on this side. Then again, I keyframe location rotation. And now as we play the animation, this light is going to move from one side to the other side. I also don't want this light to be very bright in the beginning. So at this point, I'm gonna keyframe the power, but at an earlier time, I'm gonna reduce the power and keyframe it again. Now I'm gonna do basically the same shit for the other light. So at this point, I want it to be in this position and I'm also gonna select it and keyframe the power. But at an earlier point, I want it to be in another position like here. So I'm gonna keyframe that and I also want this to have less power so I'm gonna keyframe this with a lower power level here and if you want to make a little disco effect you can keyframe different colors at different times so if you have a keyframe here with purple then you got another keyframe with yellow then you got another keyframe with blue so if you got one keyframe when the lamp is green then you got blue then you got red and purple and so on every couple of frames the color is gonna be completely different it's gonna look like you're in a fucking club and before you know it if you play around with the lights a little bit more you're gonna come up with with all sorts of cool animations. The more you animate your lights, the more detailed this is gonna end up looking. And this is the type of shit that your prospect wants to see in your portfolio when they're thinking about whether or not they should hire your ass. If you can just model a can, that ain't shit. They want you to be able to put together a whole scene like this. So now to render this out, we're gonna go to output properties, set the resolution to 1920 by 1080 p or you can go lower than that if you want to. Down here in the output settings, we're gonna change the file format to FFmpeg video, change the container to MPEG4, change the video codec to H264, that's mp4 output quality has to be perceptually lossless and now you're good to go after you pick the folder where you want to export this you can just go up here to render render animation that's going to render your shit out and before you know it you're going to have a pretty damn good animation rendered out in your computer which you can now throw in your portfolio and show it to somebody to flex now check out the fucking blender course we're going to teach you how to become a professional let me know in the comments what you want to see next and i'll see you in the next one